right, how we doing? Well, still no wins for the Flames. A home opener and a season opener that don't go their way yet. And there's some things to like about what we've seen from the Calgary Flames to start the year. Not the results, not everything, but I think there are things to like. Welcome to Flames Nation Live on this Wednesday evening. It's Pat Steinberg along with you. Let's see if I can get that microphone in, uh, in in focus. We're live in the Sportsnet 960 downtown studio. Hopefully uh, your day is going along nicely. Just finished the big show here. Getting ready for the Flames and Detroit Red Wings on Thursday night. Who do we got in? Josh Dallas Josh again, a different Josh, and Noah all in with us right now. More coming in as we speak. And uh, get your chats in, get your questions in, get your comments in on the live chat. We've got a ton to talk about today. We've got uh, some on-ice stuff. We've got uh, a waivers move today and a whole lot more. Before we get into any of it, though, let me tell you that uh, Flame Station Live is brought to you by our friends at DoorDash, where you can still use that promo code FNLiveDD. Here's the deal. Download the app, first-time users. Use the promo code FNLiveDD. You're getting a percentage off your first order, and you're getting free delivery, all thanks to our friends at DoorDash. They bring you Flames Nation Live each and every time. That promo code is FNLiveDD. So the Flames sit Oh, one and one to start the year. I guess technically they sit last in the Pacific Division, although, you know, it's still very early on. They've played the least amount of games along with Vegas and San Jose. Uh, but definitely, I think when you look at it for the Flames, you don't like to see them sitting in eighth in the division, of, of course. But I think by and large, there have been a lot of good things done for the Flames so far in their first two games. I, I don't think that it's perfect, and I don't think that we're talking about this being exactly the way they wanted to start the year, but I think there's been a lot of good things. They're amongst one of the best teams in possession in the NHL. They're spending a lot of time on the attack. They're limiting shots. They're limiting chances. The big thing for me is that I believe the Flames are laying a foundation right now for the way they want to play, the way they need to play. So I think that they are laying a good foundation. The next step is for this team to take that foundation and turn it in to more high-quality chances, turn it in to more meaningful offense. And I think there's a few ways you do that. I think, number one, we saw a little bit of this from game one to game two, more bodies to the front of the net, more traffic in front of opposing goaltenders. That's one. And then I think that there are certain players and, and, and even a team mindset to, I think, the shot volume or the possession, the attempts, the Corsi, all of that is good, and they're all the same thing. Uh, all of that is good. They're getting a ton of shots towards the net. They're spending a ton of time in the offensive end. Now, start taking those shots. Not even start, I'm not saying limit the shots, but there are times when maybe they can take it another foot or two into a more high danger area or a more dangerous area of the ice closer to the front of the net. And I think that is going to be a really important differentiation. And I know that uh, this was written about by Pike at Flames Nation this week. Should we be worried about the Flames offense? My answer to that question is no, not yet. I think it's a work in progress, and I think it's something that they need to continue to work on, but I, I don't think that this is something that is uh, a big-time worry for the team either. I think that the possession is a real positive. The time on attack and what they're doing defensively, these are real positive things. So if that can continue and they can work out and work on getting more meaningful offense, I think that uh, I, I think that the Flames will be in good shape when it's all said and done. And I'm not saying that's going to happen overnight. Maybe it doesn't happen against Detroit on Thursday. I just think it's a good foundation to have. Let's get to uh, the live chat for the first time. Uh, Dallas, uh, we'll get to that one in just a second about Glenn Godden. Um, Vincent says, what do you think about the guys this season? Um, yeah, I, I think that there's been lots of good, but there's lots of elevating or refining that needs to happen. Uh, Josh says, it's Sutter looking for sure. Yes, this is a very Daryl Sutter looking team in terms of the way they're playing. Controlling play, controlling zone time, uh, shots from everywhere. That is very much on brand for the way Daryl Sutter wants his teams to play. It has been going back to San Jose, then Calgary, most recently Los Angeles, and now Calgary again, for 
sure. Max says, with the numbers they have right now and how they're playing, I think good things are to come. Just keep working hard. And that... I don't think you just have to, you don't just keep repeating things and not elevate or refine, but I do think there is a lot that they can build on. I, I'll, I'll try not to use the word foundation much more here, but I think it's a good ground floor. I think it's a good way to start and now build on that, build on that, build on that. That's going to be the, the real important thing in the early stages of the season. And I think that Sam makes a really good point as well, that Coleman is going to be a big help to their offense. It looks like Blake Coleman is going to play on a line with Michael Backlund and Tyler Pitlick to start Thursday's game in Detroit. We'll see if that ends up happening, but that's the way it looked at practice on Tuesday. We'll find out a little bit more at Morning Skate on Thursday when they're in Detroit to kick off a five-game road trip. Joseph makes a good good point. Um, I, I think that there has been plenty of consternation about what we're going to see from Eric Goodbranson Goodbranson's been just fine. I have no problem with what I've seen from Goodbranson in his first two games. Do I have some worries about his mobility? Sure. Do I have some worries about what he is as an NHLer at this time? Yeah, I have some concerns, but so far so good. I'll give credit where it's due. And that pairing with him and Yusuf Alamaki has been just fine. They've gotten their job done. They've held up their end of the bargain. In fact, I think that the there's two pairings that have done their job just fine. Goodbranson, Valamaki. Hannafin Anderson, the one that has not to this point, Zadorov and Tanev, and as Kyle says, getting caved in. Yeah, this is not what we're used to seeing from Chris Tanev. I think a good chunk of it, based on what we've seen from Zadorov, they need Zadorov to elevate. They need him to be better. And I don't think that you make the change immediately. I think that you let that line or that let that pairing have a little bit of leash to work itself out. But Zadorov's going to need to elevate his game or else they're going to have to make a change. And whether it's elevate Valamaki to that spot, try Shillington in that spot, whatever the case may be, something has got to give because Zadorov Tanev can't be playing the minutes they are. And as Kyle says, they can't continue to get caved in like they are if, if this team's going to want to have a lot of meaningful success. Uh, more comments as we go along on the live chat. Would love to hear from you. Your questions, your comments are always welcome. Uh, we're brought to you by DoorDash, as you uh, as you know, and this segment of Flames Nation Live is brought to you by our friends at Deuce Vodka. It's the feel-good vodka, and it's available wherever fine spirits are sold in Alberta. If your local liquor store does not carry Deuce Vodka, make sure they get it in. This segment of Flames Nation Live is brought to you by Deuce Vodka. Well, the first comment on the live chat today was from Dallas, who says, I disagree with waving Glenn Godden, and I do too. I uh, I don't think Glenn Godden has done anything to deserve being put on waivers today, potentially exposed, and likely going to the American League. Something Something had to give. You knew that there was going to be some sort of corresponding move as soon as they activated Brad Richardson, which they haven't done, but I think the assumption would be that the Glenn Godden waivers move would be to assign him to the American Hockey League and thus activate Brad Richardson. Looks like everybody is healthy right now. The Flames are seemingly very adamant to go with eight defensemen to start the year. I just, I feel bad for Glenn. He was a really feel-good story, real feel-good story, rather, through training camp in the preseason. In his two regular season games, he has done nothing to play himself off the roster or even out of the lineup, and yet here we are, and and it's too bad. Um, I, I think that it's it's I, I can understand if you're a Flames fan, if you're being a little if you're a little frustrated seeing a young player with promise be put on waivers, knowing that it's it's for whether it's Richardson or Pitlick to get into the lineup or to keep Stone up, whatever the case may be. I can understand being frustrated because he was a, a really, really impressive player and a guy to be excited about through training camp. Now, I think Godin will be back. I would, uh, like, I'm not saying there's no chance you'll get claimed because I am interested to see, but usually at this time, guys don't get claimed. So 
I don't know if that is a massive risk. It's a risk, but I don't know if it's a huge one. I just I don't I don't feel like if if it ends up being the American League for Godden, I don't I don't think he deserves deserves to be there. I think he belongs in the NHL at least from what he's shown to this point. And it's too bad that he has to be the victim of the numbers game. I think is is what it comes down to for me. Um, what else we got here on the uh, on the live chat as we uh, get there to wrap things up? Uh, this from Ryan says, as a Flames fan, I'll always cheer for the team. However, I predict this could be a tough year. I just think they need to make more changes to be a cup contender. I hope I'm wrong early, but you know, roster wise, it's very similar to the group that missed the playoffs last year. So I understand Martin good at five on five problem is on the penalty kill too much. And that has hurt them important power play goals against, against both Edmonton and then on Monday against Anaheim. I don't think it's as much of a worry against teams like Anaheim, Detroit, so on and so forth. When you're going up against some of the better teams in the league, like when they're on the road against the Rangers or like they were against Edmonton, yeah, you want to stay out of the box, no doubt about it. Um, what else we got here? This from Travis. I know we haven't yet, but I do like the fourth line better. I think it's time for number 88 to be on the first power play unit. They need to make a change there. Um, I think the power Flames power play unit, I don't think needs a lot of tweaking, Travis. I'd, I'd slightly disagree on that front. I just think the, the power plays look dangerous. Has only scored the one goal but I don't think it needs... It's looked quite dangerous to me. Gaudreau is shooting it a whole lot more, so... I'm actually, I, I'd give that power play unit a little bit more rope to see what they can do. Max, Johnny Gaudreau has had way more shots lately. I like it. He's looking hungry. Just some accuracy or puck luck is needed. Yeah, I think if Johnny keeps shooting it like this, his shot looks a little bit harder. Um, he's using it a little bit more. Uh, I, I could see that turning into something good for this team. Um, what else we got here? This is from Josh, who says, when does Vladar get in? I would guess Vladar gets in Monday or Tuesday in that back-to-back -back with New York, New Jersey. It might be even on the first half of it. Who knows? But that would be my... Um, that would be my guess would be on the back to back. Just seems like a natural spot for Vladar to make his Flames debut. We'll see, but that would be my guess. Sam put Coleman on the first power play would make it better. Again, I don't think that you're looking for an upgrade on the first power play unit. I, I've quite liked the way they've moved the puck. Um, and I've quite liked um the way that they have um the way they've generated on the power play. So I'm not at this point, I'm not super eager to change things up on the power play units, but that's just me. Uh, Chris says, Pat, didn't see much of the first two games. How is Markstrom looking in your opinion? He's looked fine, but like he hasn't cost them games. He hasn't allowed any bad goals. I just think with a guy like Markstrom, you're paying him $6 million. I think he needs to make a couple of big stops at key times. Like the Jesse Pujarvi goal in Edmonton, 26 seconds after Lindholm scored to make it a one goal game. Wasn't a bad goal, but that's when you need a big stop from your $6 million goaltender. Same is true. Ricard Raquel goal, third period on Monday. Wasn't a bad goal. There was a breakdown that happened before it. Bad change, uh, missed assignment with the forward coming back, leads to a quality scoring opportunity, but that's when you need a big stop in a, in a 10 bell situation. So Markstrom has been okay. He's been fine. Hasn't been great. But he's been fine. I do think that he will need to elevate his game going forward, though. Uh, so the two questions from Zach. With Godden on waivers, does Richardson come in? Also, what is Pitlick's status? How close is he? I think Pitlick plays Thursday in Detroit. Um, I think Richardson will be the odd man out, um, at least for Detroit. Maybe Washington or the back-to-back -back next week is when we see Richardson get in. That's just a guess, though. Uh, Richardson was odd man out at practice on Tuesday. So my guess is Richardson does not play in Detroit, maybe takes another game. Um, and then we maybe see him debut against the Capitals on Saturday. We'll see. That's my guess when it comes to Richardson. Uh, how about our buddy Noah? 
I don't know, can't overreact after two games, but I don't have confidence this team's going to do anything this year, being this team is not built well enough, and there's no direction or uncertainty as to where this team is going to be in the next couple of years. Said it during the summer, if you're not going to blow it up, push the chips into the middle and go all in, don't understand why they're running it back again. Uh, that from Noah. And this from Kevin. Uh, my buddy Kevin says, uh, Monaghan needs to just be out of the lineup, even if it seems the Flames are losing the trade. So Kevin wants to move Monaghan regardless. Regardless, I think Monahan looks like a guy who's coming off hip surgery. I'm giving the guy a little bit of the, the benefit of the doubt here. I really am. I'll wait until the end of the month. I'll wait until like he's seven, eight, nine, ten games into his season before I start making any definitive judgments on what Sean Monahan is. I understand that he has not looked perfect at this point, but I, I'm not I'm not ready to completely write off on Monahan for this year. I think he deserves some time to get up to speed. Didn't play a lot in the preseason. Coming off. Um, a, a massive um, a massive surgery and I, I I think he's had some stretches so yeah I, I'm, I'm not I'm not ready to write off on it yet I think that I'm worried that it might not ever come back but at least I'm willing to give that a little bit of time and as Josh says though he hasn't scored I think Monahan's looked better I agree he does look better than where he was last year so I'm I'm letting the, I'm letting that one play out a little bit. Great stuff on the live chat today. Great stuff, great questions, great comments. That'll do it for this edition of Flames Nation Live, brought to you by our friends at DoorDash. We'll be back on Friday, I think, with Pike. We'll do another one, uh, do the dual box with Ryan Pike from FlamesNation.ca on Friday. Don't forget, Flames Nation Radio drops once a week as well. Another podcast on the network. And don't forget, we're brought to you by DoorDash. You can always check out the promo code FNLIVE10 